I16 Property, Plant and Equipment Revaluation Model Introduction This is a summary of the main content of I16. Accounting treatment comprises recognition, measurement and disclosure. This presentation focuses on measurement, subsequent measurement and now the revaluation model. I16 paragraph 31 Revaluation model. After recognition as an asset, an item of property, plant and equipment whose fair value can be measured reliably shall be carried at a revalued amount, being its fair value at the date of the revaluation, less any subsequent accumulated depreciation and subsequent accumulated impairment losses. Revaluations shall be made with sufficient regularity to ensure that the carrying amount does not differ materially from that which would be determined using fair value at the end of the reporting date. So paragraph 31 is the main principles regarding the revaluation model. To explain that a little bit further, we read paragraph 34 giving us some further explanation of paragraph 31. This paragraph deals with the frequency of revaluations. How often do you have to revalue this asset? It depends upon the changes in fair value of the item of property, plant and equipment being revalued. When the fair value of a revalued asset differs materially from its carrying amount, a further revaluation is required. Even if it is not yet time for the next revaluation in terms of your revaluation policy, some items of property, plant, and equipment experience significant and volatile changes in fair value, thus necessitating annual revaluation. Therefore, it depends on the type of asset and the volatility of its fair value. Such frequent revaluations are unnecessary for items of PPE with only insignificant changes in fair value. Instead, it may be necessary to revalue the item only every three or five years. So there's no strict rule in terms of frequency of revaluations, as long as the carrying amount of the asset never differs materially from what the fair value would be. If it's a volatile fair value, you will ne necessarily revalue more often. Paragraph 35. When an item of property, plant and equipment is revalued, the carrying amount of that asset is adjusted to the revalued amount. It's in your book set carrying amount. That carrying amount needs to change to the revalued amount. At the date of revaluation, the asset is treated in one of the following ways. And this has been done on a first year level. Paragraph A deals with a certain treatment that's only part of third year work. Paragraph B is what's applicable to us this year. This accumulated depreciation on the asset is eliminated against the gross carrying amount of the asset. So you write back the accumulated depreciation before you revalue. The amount of the adjustment forms part of the increase or decrease in the carrying amount that is accounted for in accordance with paragraphs 39 and 40. Good. Paragraph 36, again, it's a main principle, it's in bold. If an item of property, plant and equipment is revalued, the entire class of property, plant and equipment to which that asset belongs shall be revalued. What is a class of PPE? Land, buildings, machinery, equipment, vehicles, etc. So if you want to revalue a vehicle, you have to revalue all your vehicles. But you can revalue vehicles, but still have equipment at the cost model. All right, so there's your summary. We're busy with subsequent measurement. There's a choice between the cost model and the revaluation model. All PPE items are initially measured at cost, less subsequent accumulated depreciation. When will you now revalue a PPE item? There's two things that's applicable. 
you can only revalue PPE if you have a fair value. If you cannot determine fair value, how will you revalue? And secondly, if you revalue an item, when will you revalue? When your carrying amount significantly differs from what the carrying amount would have been did you revalue. All right, paragraph 31 to 42 deals with revaluations. A few aspects to discuss. You have in your book your PPE at carrying amount which consists of cost, less accumulated depreciation. That carrying amount now needs to be restated to the revalued amount. That constitutes a change in accounting policy. The choice to, to change your policy from cost model to revaluation model is considered a change in accounting policy. But important, it is dealt with in terms of I-16 and what will be discussed in this and following presentations. It is not dealt with in terms of I-8 that addresses change in accounting policy on other items. All right, net replacement cost or gross replacement cost. First of all, when you revalue, you need some or other fair value. For land, we usually determine a fair value based on market prices. For other assets like property and machinery and equipment, you'll get a revaluator, a valuator that performs this independent valuation, and that will be called a replacement cost. Now, what's the difference between net replacement cost and gross replacement cost? Net replacement cost is the fair value for an asset that is already being used, an older asset. It has been depreciated. Gross replacement cost refers to a brand new item. So when you have a carrying amount in your books of an older item, you need to compare carrying amount to net replacement cost. What's the difference between revaluing at the beginning or the end of the financial year? On first year level, you revalued at the beginning of the year. In second year level, we're also only going to do revaluations at the beginning of the year. The implication of that is your depreciation charge for the year in which you revalue would be that fair value determined at the beginning of the year over the remaining useful life from that point in time. Then we read paragraph 35 that indicated what do you do with accumulated depreciation on the date of revaluation. This was also done on first year level. Only the second bullet applies. You eliminate the, the accumulated depreciation against the gross carrying amount of the asset. The journal entry would look like this. You'll debit accumulated depreciation that's currently applicable to that asset and you'll credit it against cost price. After that journal entry, the asset is now carried in your books at a net amount. That net amount will now be revalued to the revaluation amount. Let's look at an example. The following information is available for Beta Limited. You have cost of buildings purchased on 1 January 2011 for 1 million. The accumulated depreciation on 31 December 2012 is 40,000 Rand. So how many years have passed on this asset? Two years have passed. Two years have passed. The useful life is 50 years. And the end of the reporting period is 31 December. At the beginning of 2013, that's the immediate next day of the 31 December 2012, on 1 January 2013, beginning of the year, the buildings were, re were revalued at a net replacement cost of 1.2 million. So beginning of the year revaluation to net replacement cost. To compare apples with apples, you need to compare the net replacement cost to the carrying amount of the asset. What is the carrying amount of the asset at that point in time? It's the million cost that was given, less 
two years depreciation of 40,000 Rand, giving me a carrying amount of 960,000 Rand. That compared to the net replacement cost, 1.2 million, results in a revaluation surplus of 240,000 Rand. To illustrate the elimination of the accumulated depreciation, let's look at the journal entries. Very important, you have a date for that journal entry. It happened at the beginning of the year, 1 January 2013. What do you have to do? You need to eliminate the accumulated depreciation against the gross carrying amount of this asset. What do you do? You need to get rid of the accumulated depreciation. So you'll debit accumulated depreciation 40,000, two years, and you'll credit it against the building's cost price account 40,000. After this journal, the asset is now carried in your books at 960,000. Now you restate the 960,000 to get to the 1.2 million revalued amount. That will lead to a debit to buildings of 240 and a credit to revaluation surplus. And where do we take our revaluation surplus credit first time? To OCI, credit 240,000. There's an also an alternative of doing this journal entry. We do prefer the one that I've just discussed, but I'll briefly look at the alternative. In this alternative, you debit the accumulated depreciation again for 40,000, but instead of just treating the net movement on the asset, you debit the buildings at the revalued amount, the full 1.2 million, you de-recognize the original cost of 1 million and it will give you the same revaluation surplus through OCI 240,000. And then very importantly, never forget your depreciation on your depreciable assets. At the end of that year, we recognize depreciation, debit depreciation, profit or loss, credit accumulated depreciation. How do you calculate that? You take the revalued amount at the beginning of the year and you divide that by the 48. How did I get to the 48? 50 years total useful life, two years have passed at date of revaluation, 48 years left and you get your depreciation over remaining useful life. Please note, once an asset has been revalued, depreciation has now has to be calculated over the remaining useful life of that asset. You can no longer use the 50 years useful life because two years of that has already passed.